Hey gang, welcome to another video in my Lightroom editing workflow series. Uh, this is another beach shot uh, that I took at Seven Mile Beach in Grand Cayman, beautiful, just after sunset. What I love about this photo are the flow lines from the water retreating back into the ocean right before it crashes again. Um, I think that they really serve to um, bring the viewer's eye into the frame, so I want to enhance those. I know that there are some beautiful aqua colors hiding underneath the uh, surface here that because it's so flat out of camera, you can't really see right now. So I want to enhance that as well. I think um, bringing, the, um, bringing the sky, it's a little bit too bright. I want to bring that down a little bit and, and, and really enhance, um, bring the detail out in these clouds. So I'll show you how to do that. And I think this photo could use with a good crop just again to draw the viewer's attention more to this area of the photo. So let's jump right in. I'm going to first come down to camera calibration. Uh, I take it out of Adobe Standard and put it into camera neutral for the profile because I like to start with an even flatter uh, image that I can add all the color and the detail back in that I want. Then I'm going to come back up to the basic panel and um, take a look at my white balance. Uh, this is as shot. Let's just check out what auto would be. It's better. Looks a little bit more like sunset. I think it was a little too blue as shot. Daylight back towards the blue. I actually think somewhere in between daylight and auto would look pretty good. So I'm going to drag this down probably right to there. I think that still retains some of those uh, pinks in the sky, and I think we can still pull the color I want out of the water. Um, so let's jump down. I, I, I look at my histogram, and I can see that it's pushed a little bit to the right. I know that I'm going to make some tone curve adjustments and, and uh, play a little with the contrast. And while I'm not blown out in the highlights yet, I don't want to be. So I'm going to bring the highlights down first and just see kind of where that gets us. I think that's pretty good right there. I don't think I really need to mess with any of these other um, tone adjustments right now. So the next thing I want to do just to bring the, the whole thing a little bit more towards middle is go ahead and use a gradient filter on the sky. So I'll click right here and drag this down. Oops, I've got my whites turned on for some reason. Um, I'll feather that a little bit more, bring the gradient up just a little bit more. And then the first thing I want to do is just bring down the exposure of the sky. I don't want to bring it down a ton though. So I think that's actually pretty good right there. I can always come back and mess with that a little bit. Oh, look at that. A beautiful spike on this histogram now. So we're already heading in the right direction. Um, I think go ahead and add a little contrast to make the clouds pop out a little bit more. Bring down the highlights even more. Oh, yeah. Now that made a good difference. You can see uh, just making those clouds pop out a little bit more. I don't want to be too heavy handed on this. Maybe bring that up just a touch because I've already brought the highlights down in the entire photo. Um, I'll add a little clarity just to see what that does. Oh yeah, you can see in the dark parts of the cloud, of the darker parts, that really, as I bring that up, it just makes those stand out a little bit more. So that's looking pretty good to me right there. I don't want to do too much more. I could mess with saturation now in the sky, but I think I'm going to come back because I would rather add saturation in the entire photo first. So I'll come back down. As I said, I'm not going to mess with the rest of the tone there, but I will add a little clarity. Watch the flow lines when I do this, because I have a feeling those are going to start to pop. Yes, yes, that is good. I, I'm not going to be too heavy handed here now, because there's some other things I can do to bring those flow lines out even more. But that's, that's really good so far. Vibrance, I'll bring that up a bit. Not going to do it too much right now, but that is already looking better. Saturation should bump this up even more. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. All right, tone curve. Let's do that next. Uh, what I like about Lightroom in general is that you kind of have this waterfall effect where, other than the camera calibration, um, you sort of work your way down, and, and that's a really good workflow for me. 
what I'm going to do instead of doing this manually here, I'm going to click on this guy and bring it over to the white part of these flow lines because that's what I want to enhance. And I'm going to drag that up. And it's going to make the overall photo a little bit wider too. And that's OK. That's OK because I think I don't want it to get too dark. And then I'll take it over the darker part of the sand and I'll just drag down a little bit. Not too much just to give it a little bit more definition. I like that. Let's toggle this on and off just to see that. And see, this is a very subtle S curve. I mean, it's barely an S, but it is. Toggle off, oh yeah. That made a, a great difference. You see, this looks a little bit more ethereal, and I don't want it quite like that. I would like it to have a little bit more um, punch in these flow lines. And look also up in the clouds. When I toggle this off, you, when I toggle it back on, you can see you've got the nice, the, you've got the effect that I saw when I was there of the clouds glowing. So this is good. Let's head down to the HSL panel or the hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, it's already set on saturation. What I'd like to do here, as I said, I want to enhance the color of the water over here. So again, I like this tool where you can click on this guy, bring it over here and go to the color that you want to enhance. I'll go kind of over here and just click and drag up. And that is looking pretty darn good. Yeah, that's bringing some nice color in back into the water. Um, let's toggle this on and off just to see what that did. Yeah, subtle. You know, I don't want to do it too much, but I, I'm going to do it a little bit more because I do like that extra color pop. Yeah, I think that is wonderful. Because when I was there, that water really was. I mean, it's the Caribbean, so it's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that adds a nice. And you see it even in the sky. It even brings a little bit of the color back into the, the top of the sky. So that's looking good. At this point, before I go any further, since I'm toggling, um, I would like to see kind of where I started. So if I hit my backslash key, oh, yeah. This is beautiful. Looking really, really good. All right, let's keep going down the waterfall. I don't need to do anything in split toning. I think I'm okay with the rest of the colors for the HSL panel. Detail, I, I shot this at ISO 100. And as you can see, um, this is, you, you know, I, I failed to mention, this is a long exposure shot. You can see it was 0.8 seconds, which is why you're getting these beautiful flow lines here. Um, I'm just going to zoom in by clicking right here. And um, you know, I, I had that pretty clear. Even though it was a slower shot, I guess the catamaran wasn't moving. Uh, and there's a, I think that's actually a cruise ship way out there in the distance, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, not much, because I, I think that's looking pretty good. I don't, want, I don't like to over sharpen my photos. And I'm still happy. I don't think there's enough noise to, to go crazy about. Again, it was shot at ISO 100, so um, there's not really a concern there. So from detail, um, we have already done, did I do my lens correction? I didn't even do my lens corrections. Gonna enable, well, I'm gonna remove chromatic aberration just in case there's some sort of blur around um, you know, a, a horizon line or something like that. Um, enable profile correction. Let's just see what that does. You know, I almost like the wide angle look of this better, so I'm gonna leave that off. It's, it's not a must. I typically check that box, but right now I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with without checking it. Nothing to transform. Effects I'm gonna leave to the end. One thing I almost forgot to do though, is crop this photo. Um, so let's do that. And actually, before I crop it, I like to check my horizon line. So I'm going to click on the angle tool. And I'm just going to draw a line starting on this side, click and drag. And I won't come all the way over because I've got sort of this area where the beach is. But I'll let it go right here as close as possible to where the horizon line is. And it just gave a slight turn. So it wasn't completely straight. So that's good to know. Now my horizon should be almost exactly straight. So I'm just going to drag this in. I've got it set to rule of thirds. And I 
think I kind of like this. You know, I've got some elements in here. I, I forgot to mention that may be a little bit too tight, actually. I might bring it out so that this boat over here is on this line. I've got some elements in the in the photo that if I really wanted to take them out, it's not that hard, but honestly, I think it gives the, the shot a little bit more depth that you see these other elements like the buoys and the catamaran and the other boats in here. Now, I don't wanna get rid of too much of my flow line, but I also don't wanna to get too, rid of too much of my clouds. So I'm gonna just drag this down a little so that I've still got some of that cloud up there and I think that's enough flow line. If you wanna see what this looks like before you hit enter, just without every, all the other distractions, hit L on your keyboard for lights out and then you can go one more time and see exactly what it's gonna look like. So if I wanted to move it around a little, I could here and see exactly what I'm getting in the shot. So I think that's good. I think I'll drag this out just a little bit more. Oh, it won't let me, hang on. I guess because I moved it all the way. Yeah, just like that. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think this still, you see, you've almost, especially if you look at the, the thumbnail version here, you've kind of got this swoosh, almost like a Nike swoosh, like a reverse Nike swoosh that's going here that you can see. Um, one thing that I noticed though is that my flow lines could still be enhanced a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna bump up my whites a little bit here. Uh, I've got my size the way I think it needs to be, feathers all the way up. Flow, I've turned this down and I think that's in a good area. I'm gonna go ahead and, and paint. With the flow turned down, you can really go back and forth and, and have these subtle changes made. And what I'm just trying to do is get all the areas where this fl these flow lines are. And I'll be a little bit heavier handed over here because I think that's where most people's eyes would start on these uh, flow lines. So let's take a look at what that has done um, by toggling this on and off. Oh yeah, that's really good. I, I think, you know, I could adjust this however I want at this point now that I've painted. If I go that, that's a little too much for me. I think it looked better around 50 or so. Maybe even a little bit higher than that. And we'll go up to 60. I think that's pretty good. Um, also, I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity here just to see what that does. Oh yeah, that really starts to bring it. And this, it's just working on the areas that I painted and I'm kind of sliding it up and down so you can see. But I like how I've got now a little bit more of the veins of those flow lines coming out. That looks really good to me. I'm, I think I'm happy with that. Um, again, kind of toggling on and off. That's where we were. This is where we are. I think the sky, that's one thing I almost missed there. You know, I said I didn't do anything with saturation before, and as you go through your photo, you kind of, you, you see as you're making these adjustments what still needs to be done. So I'm gonna bump that saturation up a little bit because those colors up there are beautiful. And actually, there are some magentas there that I wanna bring out, and I think I can use this, not a ton, just a little bit. You see, that's too much. Uh, just bring it back down to about there. I'm happy with that. That gives a nice color contrast as well um, between the aqua color and the magenta color. Um, actually, I might bring it up just a touch. Nah, I'm so finicky with these things sometimes. Um, and I think maybe even adjust this because it was sunset, so just bring that up just a touch. Ah, that really made those, um, it's sort of in between a pinkish, yellowish kind of color and now the sky is really glowing. And again, if I toggle the whole thing off, you're gonna see all the adjustments I made before on the sky plus the ones I just made. And I'm very happy with that. The photo's nice and balanced this way. Histogram is looking pretty darn sexy. The last thing I'm gonna do is come down to effects. And I am going to just put a little vignette on this. Not, oh, yeah, 
Not much. I don't want to. Just to keep the viewer's eye in the frame. And that is looking beautiful. Let's hit Y on our keyboard so you can see these side by side. How beautiful is that? A very flat, bluish kind of image. Flow lines are looking good, but then enhancing all the things that I wanted to, not, not overdoing it. You know, the only thing I see when I look at it this way, though, is back in that sky. I'm just going to go back. I think I was a little bit heavy-handed with some of the uh, adjustments I made to the white balance. So I'm going to bring that back just a touch. Sometimes you need to look at it in a thumbnail version. Yeah. That is what I saw that night with my own eyes. And it's beautiful. It was beautiful then. It's beautiful now. If I toggle it back this way with my backslash key, what a difference. So there you have it. Um, subscribe to Schubert Photography on YouTube for more great tutorials like this. I hope this helped you in your development of Lightroom skills. Happy shooting out there, photographers.